welcome to episode 3 of Fat Lads and Kilts. Today finds us in the coastal village of Kouros in Fife. Kouros is one of the best uh, examples of a medi medieval village in the UK. It's uh, lots of architecture dating back to the 15, 16 and 1700s. And if you look behind us, you'll see Kouros Palace. And it uh, was the home of Sir George Bruce. Dates back to 1611. And he made his fortune from coal mining which was uh, Kouros was famous for, as well as salt panning. And Outlander fans, let's not forget where we are. This is Cranesmuir. Let's go and explore. So in front of us here, this is the townhouse in Kouros. Now, back in the 16th century, this was also a witch's prison, where it said over 2,000 witches were held. Now, to the, the left-hand side of the door, that was the collect tax collector's office and to the right-hand side of the door, that was the courtroom. So we're now at the back of Kouros Palace, looking onto the, the gardens. Now these gardens were used in Outlander filming. This was Claire's Herb Garden, although it was at Castle Leoch where you've seen the garden. Isn't it beautiful up here? Look at the view, it's stunning. Now, the, in the interior of the palace, this was also used for filming. This was used as Gellis Duncan's parlour. So we're now going to make our way down to the Market Cross and Gellis Duncan's house. So here we are in the heart of Kouros village. Now this was also Cranesmuir in Outlander. If we look across here, this was Gallus Duncan's house. Now for the show, all these white buildings you see were painted grey. And once they had film finished filming, they painted them back white again. In real life it's called the study. And this is where Bishop Leighton wrote his sermons in the 1660s. And if we just spin down this road here, this um, just by that post van, uh, there's a house on the left hand side, just after the red van, and that was actually Bishop Leighton's house, and its next door neighbour is actually the, the Siemens Mission. So just here on the right hand side we've got Leary's Cottage. I wonder if he'll notice. Here Steve, turn round. Well, look above you. Aye, funny. <laughs> Very funny. So this is the Locket Well. Now this historical water supply was for Kouros was believed to have been used by followers of St. Surf. It was fed by a stream from the higher ground and a filling cistern behind the wall here. The water flow was controlled by a lever which could be locked, hence the name, the Locket Well. The stream descends the hill by the Snuff Cottage crossing Low Causeway at the stride Venal and then flows into the River Forth. So we're standing here at the ruinous uh, Kouros Abbey and um, it was built in the 1200s and uh, kind of abandoned after the Reformation in 1560. Some beautiful vaulted like, catacomb ceilings up here so I'm going to just take the camera up with me and have a wee look. Actually Stevie do you want to film this? Don't look up my kilt though. <laughs> so hopefully you've got over the initial shock of seeing Stephen's bottom and his legs. <laughs> Look at this fabulous view looking out to the, the river force. Right across the bonus. Beautiful. It water's like glass. So there we have it. Kouros Abbey and the parish church up above. Absolutely breathtaking. Oh, my God. 
Wee Willy Winky runs through the town. So we're just coming into the 12th century West Kirk uh, on the outskirts of Kuros. Now this was a Kirk for the parishioners of uh, King Carden and Kuros. So it's halfway between, so a bit of a hike for our people uh, from Kuros. They had to walk all the way uphill on a Sunday morning to head to the church. So we're going to head over to the Kirk and uh, have a wee look inside. At least you'll not need to duck here, Steve. I think you'll find a will. I'm five foot eight, not four foot eight. So, Outlander fans will recognise the church, churchyard. Uh, this was in No Way Out. Um, it's known as the Black Kirk. If we go through here. Ooh. Spooky. Sounds like your knees. <laughs> Is that your knees or the gate? You do have a WD 40. So in here, this is where we see Claire and Jamie discuss um, about what could have poisoned Thomas. And it turns out it wasn't wood garlic, it was actually Lily of the Valley. So I'm sitting here in uh, Torryburn, just along from Kuros, and this little marker stone here is a pointer to where Lilias Addy is uh, buried, and she's just buried out at sea there in a slab, I'll take you there in a second, and she was um, accused of witchcraft, and uh, she died in uh, prison before she could actually stand trial, and so I'm going to take you out to the little grave to let you see it, just jump into a little log. So this slab here is uh, where Lilius Addy is actually buried. It's a bit squelchy. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> My Timberlands! <laughs> so this is where she's actually buried. She's buried under a slab uh, out at sea, so that, or just on the coast here. Just so that um, they, they believed that if she was laid under a slab, uh, she would be she wouldn't be able to rise from the dead. So uh, that's uh, the resting place of Lilius Addy. So here we are at the end of episode three of Fat Lads and Kilts. We hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks very much for watching folks. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe, share with your friends, click the notification bell, and we'll be very much appreciative. Okay. And if you're a business or you'd like us to come along and showcase your business, if you get in touch at fatladsandkilts at gmail.com. Thanks very much folks. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.